In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to export a video inside Premiere Pro using YouTube's recommended upload encoding settings. It's my goal for you, the user, to have a better understanding of this entire process by the end of this video. The first thing we need to set is the duration of our export, and we can do that by marking our ins and outs. If you highlight a certain clip like this one right here and hit the question or backslash key, it will mark your ins and outs on whatever you have highlighted. So if I highlight this whole portion, I could set my ins and outs this way. Everything that is in between the in and out will get exported. So for this example, what I could do is take my playhead to the beginning of the timeline, hit I to set my endpoint, and then take my playhead to the end of these sections of clips and hit O to set my out point. Now we need to go to the export menu. A couple different ways you could do this. You could hit the export button right here. You could go to file, export media, or you could hit command M or control M on Windows. For this, I'm just gonna hit the export button and now we are in the export window. Before I go any further, it's important to note your source settings so you know what your sequence was and what you're going to be exporting to. I'm gonna ignore this whole YouTube button because that would automatically upload to YouTube once you've exported. And I don't suggest doing that because I think everyone should at least proof check their exports before uploading so you don't waste time. If you did upload something with an error in it, we're not gonna deal with these. We're just gonna deal with a media file and exporting directly onto your computer. Now here you can change the file name. I'll change mine to hit that like button. Another tip here for those of you that are used to the older ways of exporting inside Premiere Pro, if you want to change the location of your video, you would click right here. But another tip is if you are doing different versions of your exports, lots of times you've already done a previous naming scheme for whatever that title of the video will be. So right here, if I were to click this video, it's how to RGB split chromatic aberration Premiere Pro. That's a very long title that I don't want to type out every single time. So anytime you want to have different versions of your titles, all you need to do is click on the location, then click in here. And at the end of this, I would put maybe V2 and then V3, V4, V5, so on and so forth. It just makes it easier to do new iterations of the versions if you click on the location, then click on the title. A lot of people would be used to something like that, but I'm gonna hit cancel because I don't want it to change the name up here in the file name. So I'll hit cancel. Right here, you can already see a UT preset put in, but before I get to that, I want to show you format, and this is where we'll get into YouTube's recommended upload settings. First is the container, which is .mp4. There are a bunch of different codecs that you can use to upload to YouTube, but they recommend using something with a .mp4 at the end of it. And a certain codec that will do that is H.264, which just so happens to be the video codec that YouTube recommends. So over here in format, if I go over and to this drop down menu, I already have H.264 selected. There are other video codecs that you can use such as H.265, or sometimes people may upload ProRes versions of their videos to YouTube, but YouTube at the time of this upload is still recommending H.264. So that's what I'm gonna stick with. So I'll click this, your preset might change to something different. And now is where I want to showcase to you where to find the YouTube presets inside Premiere Pro. These three little dots, I'm gonna click that and go to more presets. Under here, we can just search for YouTube. And underneath that, we have YouTube 1080p Full HD and YouTube 2160 4K Ultra HD. I'm going to star both of these. And once I hit OK, they will now show up in my preset menu. For this example, my video source was 3840 by 2160 4K. So I'm going to export with the YouTube 4K export settings. Now here's where even if you are shooting and editing in HD, you might want to export in 4K because it's a lot of people's opinion that YouTube will give preferential treatment to a 4K upload more than a HD upload. I don't know how much of that is true, but it doesn't hurt you to try. So I'm going to do YouTube 2160 4K and move on to the video drop down menu. To explain more of this, let's go to these bullet points right here. The first is progressive scan. I was shooting in 2160p, that progressive. So right here, that field order is already progressive. If I go to this high profile, that high profile is down here underneath encoding settings. Profile is already high. There are 
some bullet points that I'm not going to cover in this tutorial because they're higher level and you don't really need to know about them. Just know that in the back end, Premiere Pro is already giving you the best settings for these parameters. In fact, you don't even have access to some of these. One thing I do want to note though is the variable bitrate. This is something that you can change and it's probably the most important slider in your video export settings. So if I go down here, by the way, if you don't see any of this, it's because I've hit the more button. So if I go down here underneath bitrate settings, we have a drop down menu of CBR and VBR. CBR stands for constant bitrate, VBR stands for variable bitrate. A very basic explanation of this is that CBR will devote the same amount of information for every single frame of your video spread across the entire video. Whereas with VBR, it will vary the amount of information depending on how much action is going on or change is going on from frame to frame. And then there's also one pass and two pass. You may see a quality difference in two pass, but there is a big difference in one pass in that variable bitrate one pass at the time of this upload uses hardware encoding, whereas variable bitrate two pass uses software encoding. Hardware encoding is the way to go if you want fast render times. In the past, I used to do VBR two pass and theoretically this is supposed to give you the best looking export because it's doing two passes of your export instead of one. But for me, the encode times really trump that because I don't see too much of a difference between these two options. There are two other checkboxes that I wanna point out here the render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. Both of these will also give you the best quality. Sometimes checking these may not affect your export visually. It just depends on some of the parameters within your project and it varies from project to project. But if you're looking for the absolute best looking export, then you would do VBR2 pass and check off both of these. The great thing about VBR one pass is it still uses hardware encoding and you can still use the render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. Now let's go back and look at our video Kodak. Right here it says that it wants a variable bitrate. So I'm not even looking at constant bitrate, I'm looking at these two as an option and variable bitrate one pass is the one that I would recommend doing. And it also says no bitrate limit is required, though we offer recommended bitrates below for reference. So let's check those out. Down here in this drop down menu, this is going to vary depending on your resolution and your frame rate. So for me, and when I hit the YouTube 4K preset, it automatically set my target bitrate to 40. Let's see how that stacks up to their list right here. So I have an SDR upload that's 4K and it's at 40 megabits per second, right smack dab in the middle of this number range. I could have this go up to 45. For the past year and some change, I've just been using this YouTube preset as it is inside Premiere Pro. I haven't experienced any problems with it. For those that are wondering, if you take this target bit rate, you can click and go all the way up to something like 300. If I take this up, it adds more bitrate. But what that does is add to the overall estimated file size of your video. And this is a huge file size for something like an eight minute video. Let's say you have a higher frame rate video of 48, 50 or 60, stick to these numbers. Don't stick to that 40. Underneath our video, we have audio, so I'm gonna click on that. Mine's in stereo, and here they have 384 kilobytes per second. Right now it's 320, which is completely fine in my opinion, but if you go to the drop-down menu, scroll down, we do have 384, so I'll click that. If I scroll on up to the audio Kodak, it says AAC, which our audio format is AAC, and a sampling rate of 96 or 48 kilohertz which my sampling rate is at 48. To touch on the frame rate, content should be encoded and uploaded in the same frame rate it was recorded. So if your sequence that you're editing in is 23.976 or 24 frames per second, you should export your file at 24 frames per second. If you're doing video game capture at 60 frames per second and your sequence is being edited at 60 frames per second, you need to export it at 60 frames per second to actually see that inside YouTube. Just to touch on video resolution, the most common is 16 by nine, or if you were to upload a vertical video, it'd be nine by 16. And those most common pixels of that ratio are 1920 by 1080 
and 3840 by 2160. One thing that isn't talked about here that I'll just touch on quickly is if you wanted to export your captions along with the video. And if I go down to captions, it says burn captions into video. And this is if you want the captions to actually export with the video. But for this video, I don't want to do that. I just want to create a sidecar file and that will create a .srt file that you can then upload with your video into the captions portion of YouTube. If you did change any of the settings and you want to save that, you can go back up here to these three dots and hit save preset and then name it whatever you want. Right here is the estimated file size and you can hit export to export it directly from Premiere Pro or you can send it to Adobe Media Encoder which allows you to export videos while you're still working inside Premiere Pro. Now that you probably have a general understanding or have some presets saved for how you want to export your videos for YouTube, I should mention this little quick exports button up here. Next time you create a video and you want to quickly export it, just go up to this little icon after you've set your in and outs, click that, and there's only two things you need to do. One is choose the location of where you want that file to be. You can change the name of it right here. And then because you highlighted or favorited those presets or saved your own presets, we can click this down and go to something like the 2160p 4K Ultra HD preset and hit export. And that's a quicker way to export your videos once you have your presets saved how you would like them. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. My name's Javier Mercedes and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.